And I remember I saw like a fleck of a tear in her eye. So I'm like ruining date night. and Like totally ruining date night. I don't think we actually got the deed done that night. Like I ruined it. Right. I did not close. (laughs) Different episode. But but I literally thought though, I was like, I'm going to tell her a number. Like there's no way I'll make it. Right. And then uh, a year and a half later, I did. Close. No, you're <laughs> close. No, I had, I had babies early. Good for don't, you. don't don't you worry. <laughs> I'm Josh Sigmund, and I'm Bryn Rouse. I'm a mortgage guy with a passion for helping people with their money and all things business. Bryn is my co-host, and I'm a marketing girl. I am literally obsessed with it. Oh, and Josh has showed me how to save money quite a bit, actually. Because of her obsession, I hired her to do my marketing. And we've worked together for 10 years. We launched Sigmund Sense in 2020, a podcast about money. It's a podcast that teaches people how to save more, give more, create wealth, and retire early. And we recorded and published 34 episodes. People liked it, and it was so fun. But most importantly, we helped people. So we're excited to announce we're doing a second season. And we're mixing things up. We're moving away from money talks to focus on all things business, leadership, management, team building, book reviews, hiring, firing, operations, motivating teams, lead generation, time management, personality profiling, closing skills, and of course money and marketing. We are inviting you to continue this journey with us and we want your input. What topics would you like to see covered? Email all of your ideas to our podcast email address, sigmundsense at gmail.com. And be sure to click that subscribe button when you visit our channels. You'll get notified when we drop new episodes. Are you ready? Season two, getting down to business. Welcome to Sigmund Sense. Welcome back to Sigmund Sense. What we're going to talk about now is we're, um, if you did not listen to last episode, stop, go back, listen to last, last episode, because what we're talking about is uh, the VTO, which is called the Vision Traction Organizer. It's out of the book Traction. It is... Uh, a carry on of our conversation of, so you want to start a business, what should you do first? And uh, we've done a, uh, a little bit of time already and I want to make sure that it carries on. So we're still working on the first page of the VTO. Uh, last episode, we spoke about culture, mission, vision, vision, core values, and why that's important and why it shouldn't just be a, a slang or a, co- a coin term, why it should be utilized with the organization. And the next step now is, Again, we're staying at the 30,000 foot view of your business. We need to dive into like, how are we going to sell this shit, right? So we're going to talk about marketing strategy. We're going to talk about what's our sandbox. What the sandbox is, is where are we going to do business? Like, so is this business a internet business? Is this business geographically in Texas? Is this a business uh, worldwide? Like, what is this? Where is our sandbox? We're going to play in the sand. Um, And then... What are our uniques? Because let's be honest, uh, there are billions of people in the world and it turns out that lots of ideas are the same idea or carry on the same idea with the idea that you're going to be a little bit better right. than what's already out there. Correct. So if you can't articulate exactly what makes you unique yeah. and the consumer, whoever that might be, B2B or direct to, to point of sale, doesn't believe or understand even why you're unique, then the business can still fail at an early fledgling age. And it could be because of marketing, right? So uh, in this, I think the best place to start here is the 10-year. The 10-year. So here's the thing about the 10-year picture, okay? Um, I'm going to give everyone an asterisk that I think is super important to understand. I say it a lot is dream bigger sooner. Dream bigger sooner. Here's why I say that. So you are listening and you're a college kid. And the most you ever made in your life was uh, $15 an hour for five hours a week during your last summer uh, summer off and literally 3000 bucks a lot of money. And, and I remember that stage in my life and it was a lot of money and that's the truth, okay? The reason why that, I say it that way that that's the tr- 3000 bucks a lot of money, that's the truth is because um, my perception of reality is only based on my own experiences to date. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what's interesting though, is as I've got into goal setting, as I've gotten into vision planning, what I've learned is over 20 years of doing this, that when I actually set out a goal or I actually set out a destination and I'm clear about how to get there through a plan, Mm -hmm. it always happens faster than I expected. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
I'm going to tell you a story because I love stories. And, story and time. I'm sure you've Hashtag heard story time with Sigmund. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm sure you've heard this before. Uh, but uh, so my mom, I love my mom, is a working mom. Uh, and my wife is not a working mom from a traditional sense, uh, from a standpoint of like go to a job, but she has a big job taking care of three children, yeah, she right? Yeah, off all so day long at the house. my upbringing was mom could take care of us and go to work. And uh, my wife from Texas for sure want, wants to and does stay home with the kids. And I love that, right? So I remember we were having dinner at Chili's one day. And it was a date. Uh, we were having a date at Chili's, and I was probably 23 years old or That's 24. Insane, bro. We just. Well, how old were you? Dude, it was a big deal. Come I could, on. Uh, like, it was one of those things where, <laughs> like, I remember just saying. Just kidding, I love me some original I talked her crispers. out of it. I remember in a date, I talked her out of an, ep- <laughs> out of an appetizer because I really was like, I don't want this to be super too expensive, right? Like, yes, no. that, that, yes that's the truth. Okay, no. this is my reality. No. I Apple think people have understood this before. <laughs> right, so. Uh, the the triple the triple something it's the egg rolls the wings and the egg rolls wings and oh uh, and I don't know all I you do know what I'm talking the about original, it's the triple I just go straight for the original crispers of course you do <laughs> of course you do so, so that being said but Justine would know she works there oh yeah worked worked not worse <laughs> so I remember that we're at this date and uh, you know I'm at the fledgling stages of my career. And Christy has a master's education. She's higher educated than me as a, a teacher, early education. And um, so she's a teacher at this point. And I remember her looking me in the eyes and saying, hey, honey, uh, how much do you have to make for me to be able to stay at home with the kids? And I literally thought to myself. Okay, wait, back it up. This is a date? This is a date. An unmarried date? Uh, it's a date night. We were probably just married. Okay. We're just married. This is probably 2004. Okay. Um, like I said, it's fledgling in my career. And I remember this lit- goes back to this goes to the episode that's conversations to have before marriage. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I was like, because I literally I heard I heard the, the like, like uh, you walk into a bar and like the music stops. This is what happened to me because I was because in my mind I was like, what? Like I married a teacher. Like I I expect you to work forever, right? And it just didn't occur to me they weren't going to work because my reality. <laughs> Was that my mother still works to this day. Right. Okay. So different strokes, different folks, totally cool. Yeah. It was just her reality was different than my reality. And this all comes into business planning because I remember literally I thought to myself, okay, what's a number that I will never make ever? And I'm going to throw that number <laughs> out because I got to give her an oh answer. My but my answer was I'll never make that ever. So, so awesome. when I make this much money, then you can stay home. And I remember I saw like a fleck of a tear in her eye. So I'm like ruining date night and like totally ruining date night. I don't think we actually got the deed done that night. Like I ruined it. Right. I did not close. (laughs) Different episode. But, but I literally thought though, I was like, I'm gonna tell her number. Like there's no way I'll make it. Right. And then, uh, a year and a half later I did. Close. No, you're (laughs) close. No, I had, I had babies early. Don't, don't, don't you worry. Um, (laughs) No, I hit that income number a year and a half later. And uh, I remember her, like, I didn't even think about it when we were doing tax returns. And she saw it. She's like, stay at home. Like, right? Hot diggity. Hot diggity. <laughs> and the, the reason I tell that story here is that uh, we always short our goals because our expectation of the future is based on our experiences of the past. Okay. Um, so there's a very few percentage of the world, the one percenters, uh, that are literally l- think we're going to, you know, eventually have intergalactic space travel Yeah. and it'll probably will happen because we have the 1%. But for the rest of us, myself included, um, it wasn't until having episode after episode of, uh, whether it's, a uh, a physical goal or a spiritual goal or a money goal or a giving goal or a business goal or a unit goal or a volume goal or Mm -hmm. that when I would put things out there that were a little bit scary and outside my comfort zone, usually based on seeing other people do something similar that I said, well, if he can do it, that knucklehead can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Right. The, that I started to understand that it's okay to throw a number out there. That's kind of scary. And if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Yes. Um, I would also like to point out that I think that, Birds of a feather, flutter, flock, fl- 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 fly together. Yeah. 
So like make sure you're hanging out with the right people because I think oh, yeah. a lot of the people that you hang out with, mm -hmm. you you meaning you specifically. High school friends. Um like set weird shit goals, you know, like mm -hmm. really crazy stuff. So make sure that Are you talking about Chris Hawker? He's a great example. Yep. He's a great I love example. That guy. Um so just be really that it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like if, you know, if you want to do some cool stuff, if you want to accomplish some big things, make sure you're surrounding yourself with people yep. that really are futuristic. Are, yeah. And, and especially when you're talking about bu uh, business planning and goal setting and here's why. So, or anything, gotta, but you could take this anywhere. Like you could take sure, this physically you, or spiritually. You, you or anything. could, Absolutely. you could like, so just it, it's important because there's lots of people, probably the majority, I could be wrong, but I think the majority of people, really live kind of, I don't want to say mediocre, but for the lack of a better word, like great lives, great lives. And sure we have like, there's goals, there's goals and we set our goals and, and we hit our goals, but it's not the extreme goal because I have heard time and time again, like I didn't even know how to dream big until I got onto the Sigmund team. I didn't even know mm. what that meant. Mm. So, we can't assume that like everybody really understands what it is to dream big yep. because not everybody hangs in circles of people that are willing to do really crazy shit. Yeah, I love that. I love that answer. And here, here's, uh, so I've got a friend of mine, Todd Screama, and I remember um, it's probably been 15 years ago that, that we were actually we were on a ski lift in Lake Tahoe. I remember this. We're on a ski lift in Lake Tahoe and we're, we were going up and we were chit-chatting about a lot of stuff. And um, one thing he said uh, that I'll never forget the day I die is he said, there's a few high school friends I, I still hang out with. There's a lot that I don't. And I said, well, why? He said, because I go back together with my high school friends and there's the majority that talk about the good old days, what they used to do, the girl they used to date, the, the glory days and the game that they won. And there's a very few people that are talking about what they're going to do, where they're going to go, yeah. what's next. And that's what you're talking about is, you know, the you want to be around people that are are engaged and working towards what's next, not who's stuck in the past, right? Or be the one, be the leader that says, "Hey, who wants to do this crazy shit with me?" Yep, absolutely. Which would be a cool place to kind of start forming yep. the group of people that you're now gonna. Yeah, but start I, you always you don't want to be the first person. You want to be the person. F I think it's easier to be second following first because it's easier to follow the snowplow than be the snowplow even if it's like hey let's so my group of friends like hey let's all i don't even know i can't even think right now drink 25 bottles of fuji water every single day who's in with me i think that's a crazy idea but why, like but, but why not but yeah. why not right but like why not because you'll die too much of but anything like, is a bit wouldn't yeah. that like start to at least develop yeah like, the i think right it depends atmosphere. absolutely i think it depends on who you're hanging with and how they respond because if like people that are naysayers now will be naysayers later um i want people that are like yeah shit, let's why not let's try it let's as try opposed it. to why it's not gonna work oh i hate that shit. right i, I can't stand that i hate like, that let's shit. let's find i hate out. that shit. but going back to this 10-year vision um think so we i think in episode one like uh sorry season one we talked about what the majority of people like this is a a, a study from mit if you ask people like what's rich they'll answer something that's like a dollar more than their dad or mom mm -hmm. earned like whoever yeah, it's typically it's typically you know, just above whatever their parents right. earn because that's the life they understand and mm -hmm. so they can't think past that and that's why yeah. it's really important to uh you know uh how to win friends and influence people. I believe it's, it's the a book that says too. I think I would say like to like start like crazy out earning your parents. Yeah. It is a little, I mean, there's just kind of a little bit of a weirdness that goes yeah, along with that um, too. And I, I think I'm quoting the right book, but I think it's how to win friends and influence people says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You know, oh. show me your friends. I'll show you, I'll show you your future. Uh, and it might not be, maybe it's, Somebody please in the comments, uh, uh, please let me know if I'm wrong on this because I want to quote correctly, but for sure, something that sticks in my head is show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And that's, this is what I we're like talking that. about where if you surround yourself with people that are yeah. thinking bigger, going further, 
challenging the status quo, uh, happy but not satisfied growth mindset people, yeah. you're just going to do better. And if you employ those people, not from a you're my employee, but you ask them for help in developing your 10-year vision, I believe it will be more exciting because it's scarier because the, the thought of where we're going is worth like, let's get behind this, right? Yeah, totally. And so the 10 year, again, you might have a product or a service, you might have international or, or, or regional, doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to explain is when you sell a 10 year, the 10 year must not just be a idea, it's gotta be a metric oriented thing. It's gonna be, I'm gonna sell this many units in 10 years. Right. Be, yeah. I'm gonna make this much profit or this much income in 10 years. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna help this many families into homes in 10 years. I'm going to give away this much money in 10 years. Yeah. I'm going to have run X number of ultra marathons in 10 years. My point is, is put something out there that's a scary thing because as we work through the rest of the VTO, it should be a linear thought process about where we're going. And from here forward, it's the logical three years from now. How are we on track versus one year from now? Are we on track? Versus what are the biggest yeah. things we need to deal with right now to get us on track in the first yes. place. So when you put it out there, it doesn't have to be a paragraph or a page or this big dissertation for 10 years. It's really like, okay, if I'm going to sell widgets, how many widgets will be selling in 10 years? If I'm going to sell a service, how many people am I going to serve per annum in 10 years? Yeah. If I'm going to uh, be a subscription how many subscribers do I have in 10 years? If yeah. I'm going to, um, if you are equating this more towards a spiritual or a physical or a marital or a blank, what does it really look like in 10 years? It's a great exercise because like, for example, right now I've got, uh, today is, uh, we're in July of 2021. So 10 years from now, I won't have a 14 year old daughter, I have a 24 year old daughter. Who will have, in theory, graduated college or maybe married at that point. Maybe even have a kid. Crazy thing about 10 years from now. Yeah. Like, that's where I'd be. I would have my youngest, who's my baby, who's not nine yet, will be in August, will literally be graduating from high school in 10 years. My middle, my 11-year-old, so, will so be crazy. legally drinking in 10 years at 21. And so... What do I want my life, my business, my hours, my giving, my, 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 yeah. what do I want that business to do at that point in time? Um, we all think we have more time, uh, but shelf life of businesses is, is not always real. Um, businesses and environments and needs change. Like uh, Blockbuster was a badass business for I a mean. lot of years. Netflix got rid of that shit pretty quick, right? Um, if you go to streaming service, uh, like, uh, um, phone books, let's think about phone books at home. They're gone. You think about uh, a phone at home, like not remove phone books, (laughs) like paying for a phone at home that rings on the wall. What the hell? What is that? Like kids will look at like, what is that thing with (laughs) the wire? Um, so businesses do have a shelf life. So don't think you've got the rest of your life to get it figured out. Move the needle. and But uh, if you dream out 10 years, it'll probably happen a lot faster. That's why the, that's really important to decide what's the end goal. What's the extra strategy? I want to build this and sell this by this date. I want to get this many, I want to help this many families. I want to save this many lives, whatever it is for you. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense for 10 years? Yeah. Cool. But number one of business, one number one rule of business is, do you remember? Number one rule make of money. business? Yeah, make a profit. That's <laughs> That is the point, ding, right? Ding, ding. So, and it's it's not about greed for you socialists out there. No, it's not about it's greed. It's because you use that money to employ more and right. you can't employ more and get your service out if you can't pay the bills. Correct. So to and get to market. And I always tell people like we need, we need the boss to make money. Like we need the, like we need to make money. because Everyone wins when the business makes yes. money. <laughs> So yes. don't think that's a bad thing. A the bad number thing. one rule of business is to make a profit. So marketing strategies and understanding your uniques yes. is super important. Now, the good news is you are in marketing, so you As can help with this. Out. Um, so I think that there's, uh, especially in service, uh, but in quite a few industries, who you're marketing to has different messages. 
Agreed. But being clear about, so for example, in real estate, I'm a lender. We are lenders. We have two clients every day, mm-hmm. separate of our team and company, right? We have right. a referring partner, like a realtor or builder. Mm-hmm. And we also have the client, the person that's buying or selling a house, right? Or refinancing a house. Uh, what I say to a realtor for why to use us, totally different, totally different than what I would say to a client. Right. What matters to a client might be a low rate. What might matter to a client might be closing on time. What matters to a client might be being communicated with accurately and, and often and proactive. What matters is that the numbers are the numbers. Uh, for a referring partner, in theory, that's an assumption, right? Like yeah. a realtor will fire us if we miss closing dates. A realtor will fire of us if we're screwing clients. A realtor yeah. will fire us if we don't refer in phone calls. So why would a realtor work with us is a different marketing message, different message. right? So understanding who you're catering to and what those marketing messages might be is part of it. But the other piece, which I want you to dive into is why a unique or what the uniques are matters so much to getting this new business off the ground. So I think you start with what, where the struggles are in the business, right? So when you're going to start a business or, or whatever, you're doing it because there's a hole somewhere. There's a need and your job is to fill it. There's a need. Um, and don't let anybody tell you, well, they're, they, they're already doing that or they already have that. That's fine. There's still a need and there's still a way for it to be done better. So I think it's really, really important to understand what are the what are the frustrations that people have with whatever company, business, product, service that they're utilizing? What is it? Um, start there. And so can we brainstorm a couple of examples? There? Yeah. Okay. So think about, uh, so I'm trying to make sure I cover a gambit for everybody. Geographic constraint. So you and I have kids that play baseball. We do. We both travel way too freaking far to go to baseball practice for indoor gyms, et cetera. So uh, a need that could be filled is a closer gym. Uh, A a cost. So it turns like, for example, Elon Musk is the first one to figure out a way to bring down rockets to reuse, which decreases the, which right. Cause every other rocket ever in history, like goes out in the atmosphere and into the galaxy or goes in the bottom of the ocean. Just like, let's just reuse it. So how do I bring this? So the, the need is how do we decrease the cost of space travel? And so (laughs) it's a way to fill it. Uh, a service might be, um, how to do something faster. Like God forbid that we wait a minute or two to get an answer. We want that answer in 16 seconds, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, another need that you might feel might be um, uh, like, I, there's so many annoying things. Uh, I'll give I, you like I one that just, re- 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 I just was in the mountains. So I'll just give you one more and you, you throw out some more. So uh, snowboarders. So snowboarders, and it's, it, I, it's the first time I've seen it, but I'm a skier. And one of the reasons I ski is the thought of, sitting my ass down on the snow every time I get off a lift to unbuckle and buckle and rebuckle and unbuckle and sit down to take off and on my boots is like obnoxious. Like, dude, I'm getting old. Like, I don't know. So well, hot. guess what? Like there's s- clip ins now. I was like, holy <laughs> like, shit. Somebody got tired of that shit there, and they yeah. jumped up a way to just to click into the snowboard. Absolutely. And so it's, identify the need and fill it, but be able to explain what's in it for you what is, is really the thing, but keep going. Yeah. So, you know, whatever your thing is, like, understand the frustration first and start there with what you're going to do to overcome those things. Because I guarantee you, if there's any single person that skis, goes to the batting cages, whatever, they've experienced those frustrations and it's going to click oh, really quick. You said in the last time, uh, a couple calls ago, a couple meetings ago, a couple podcasts ago, <laughs> you said, you know what annoys me is I go to watch my kid play baseball <laughs> And I'm inside a metal building and my phone doesn't work and I'm a businesswoman. And if they just had what free Wi-Fi in the building, free like Wi Fi. Right? Give me some Wi Fi. Like I also would love to have video of him. I'm a freaking freako about my kids, right? Like I wanna see what they're doing. I wanna watch how they're doing. And so why not video my damn kid and then send it to me? Like Well, isn't that cool how like that's a uh, so somebody talked about that five years ago. Because now there's an app that if you're not able to make your kids game, you can literally watch. Yeah, Game Changer. Game Changer. What up? Like watching your 
you're anyone who's at bat when many strikes there are who's yes but hello game changer look alive like it's not like it's it's just little diamonds that go around but it's the beginning where, for that parent where that wants are to you know at game on. changer like add video show to me it. add video so that's a great example of well somebody's already done that well no They've done, They've done that. the basics of, I want to see what's happening with the team live. Correct. Because my wife's not answering the phone, but show me a live stream video of the baseball game Absolutely. with Game Changer, right? Absolutely. So there's always a way to improve on what's out there. There always is. And so as far as your marketing messaging goes, start with what the frustrations are and what yours is going to do better. But here's where I feel like um, people miss the boat is they show up and throw up with oh what how great they are right like oh well here's here's why my my service is better here's why you should come here here's why whatever but they don't they're assuming that the person the prospect knows why that's important mm. that is so far from the truth yep. that's so far from the truth so you have because even if somebody's experienced the pain, they don't really understand why they experience the and pain and really what it's costing them. Oh, interesting. Like, sure, it's a frustration, but like, do you understand like what the dollar value is to that? Do you well, give me an example? Um, gosh, okay. So I feel like I'm being put on the spot. So I'm going to go back to batting cages because that's my that's the world I'm living in right now. Okay. Um. So what is the time? cost of me one not having there's no ac okay so i'm super freaking hot here's the other thing better example okay now i'm back on point um there's no ball return there's no ball return so every time there's a round fired off we can do two or three and then we got to stop everything we're doing and we got to fill the freaking machine back up that is a waste of time and, and you're paying for it by the And hour. you're paying for it. And baseball, hitting, batting is about reps. And I, and specifically with Weston, like Weston, one of his things is like, you know, he's, he's pretty strategic at bat and he doesn't, he's not, he's, he's very particular about which ones he swings at. I want him swinging at every freaking ball. So he's always freaking ready. Okay. So I need fast. I want him to get in there. I want him to bang out these balls and I want to power through and let's get in and out in 45 minutes and have a great workout. Right. You're waste. You're wasting time. You're wasting money. You're wasting your, your child's focus on the task at hand, which is also not great for their practice time. Right. right? Um, we talked about the use of indoor facilities, yep. baseball facilities, so I'm going to sign up for a select team. I'm going to pay $15,000 to put my kid on your team. And that gets me 10 tournaments and all these practices. And six of them are rained out. Except six of them are rained out. Does or you can pay 17000 to be indoor and guarantee the tournament. Guarantee the tournament and all the practices. Yep. And what's the goal? Well, the goal is to get these kids scholarships to college. Okay. Like that's the goal. So we increase chances of scholarships by X amount because they Get 30% more practice time, more time on the field, whatever. That's very interesting. Okay. So, so off I, the cuff. I love that. I love, that was actually very good. <laughs> so I'll just give you an example that comes up on a daily basis in my industry. Um, so, you know, go, right now we're in the height of the market. It's 2021 and we're in July when I'm recording this. And literally there's 15 offers overpriced on every single home right now. Okay. Uh, one of the ways that uh, agents are trying to win deals is by shortening the time frame by which a client will close. So let's say we'll close this deal in 21 days instead of three, okay. four, instead of four weeks or five weeks or six weeks. So then I have these conversations and we can close in 21 days. Um, and we'll have these conversations with clients that are shopping and shopping and shopping and talking to 15 different realtors, or sorry, 15 different lending companies. And ultimately it's coming down to a 0.125, which is an eighth in rate difference or $500 in fees difference that they're selecting between. And going back to the marketing message, the reality is, is that if you don't go with a, in this environment, if you don't go with a mortgage company that performs on the time frame right. by which you contractually obligate yourself to close on, to no fault of your own, 
You can lose your earnest money, your option money, your appraisal money, your survey money, and the house. And it can, so they can go right back on the market and sell. So literally, without exaggeration, five minutes before this podcast recorded, I got a call from my friend Helen. And Helen's an exceptional agent. She's got a listing. This is what's, I want you to hear this because it's funny to me. So not funny for the seller or, uh, or the buyer because it's what's about, about to happen to them. So the lending company who the buyer of, the, of Helen's listing went with uh, went with them because they were saving $400 in fees. Okay. And sounds good because 400 bucks matters to everybody. Yeah. Except for the fact that the lender was a idiot and literally told two veteran agents, the buyer's agent, the seller's agent, that they don't order the appraisal until the CD is finished. The CD is the closing what? disclosure. What? So literally the loan is supposed what? to close <laughs> tomorrow. Okay, literally. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't, no, pause. This is real. Pause. I need everyone to understand the, 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 the yes. I need everyone to understand this. So <laughs> it's supposed to close tomorrow. So you got a seller of an expensive house, $650,000 house, that is expecting to get their money tomorrow, sell the house tomorrow, that Helen's about to call today to say, I just got notified by the buyer's lender that they just ordered the appraisal today and the appraisal should be in, and today, by the way, is July the 28th. The appraisal should be in in time to close by August the 30th. A month from now, because they didn't order on time. So here's the deal. So so (laughs) Helen is telling the buyer's agent and buyer, cool, put up an extra $10,000 of non-refundable earnest money. Oh. And you must agree to switching to use the Sigma team for your loan. Or we're going to take your earnest money and your option money because we lost, lost faith in your lender and put the house back on the morrow tomorrow. Your choice. That was the call that just came up. Right? So if somebody doesn't understand that if you miss closing, you risk thousands of dollars of earnest money, option thousands. money, inspection money, appraisal money, survey money, and the house. Are you really going to shop over 400 bucks? But if you don't articulate that, so this is going back to yeah, Bryn saying, if you can't explain well, and not just you, but your team, not just your team, but your marketing material, not just right. your marketing material, but what's on your, your website, why you, why it's unique and that you close right. on time. Closing on time seems so simple. Right. But if you don't explain what you lose if you don't close on time, you're missing the whole point. So just remember, every consumer is asking, what's in it for me? Yeah. If you can't explain that uniquely, you're just like everybody else. If you're just like everybody else, it's always about the price. Always, which is a horrible place, horrible place to play from. Yep. Horrible. Um, I love that. Okay. So we went through the marketing message or the marketing strategies and the uniques and the uniques. And where um, we're going in 10 years. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's a we good, should wrap up yeah, I feel like it's a good place to stop because then we can talk about, you know, how do you identify your sandbox? And this is something that is huge and people get really trapped in. Do you like that sand <laughs> trap? Get it? They get trapped in um, because it's easy. It's easy to get trapped in it because man, that deal looks good. And yeah. holy shit, I want to make money off of that. And look at like, look how look at the That's opportunity. Not your sandbox. But if it's not your sandbox. It can be a huge detriment uh, for multiple reasons. And so that's what we'll talk about. We'll make a time. note. We'll pick up there where we left off. We're going to talk about sandbox. sandboxes, the three year vision and then the one year vision uh, in the next episode or two. And uh, until then, we really appreciate you and your time. Thank you for listening to Sigmund Sense. How can they get a hold of us? Email us at sigmundsense at gmail.com. Please find us on iTunes and Amazon Music and Spotify and all the social channels. Um, and tell the people you know and love. Um, anybody that loves money for season one or business for season two or sales. Just, <laughs> sales. I mean, um, yeah. Let them know. And uh, we appreciate yeah, certainly all the anyone that's thinking about opening a business, please have them listen to the last two and the next two episodes. We'll for help sure. Them out. For sure. But cheers. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, we'll see you on Sigma we'll Sense. We'll see you later. Bye, guys.